In this video, we take an example from population and we try to understand the foundation of the dynamic analysis. And we'll, it, this will also help us to develop the rationale for introducing the constant of integration whenever we do the process of integration. So let us see uh, this uh, example. This example is about population. And we are assuming that the population size is represented with age and it changes over time at this rate. So this is the derivative of the population function and it is equal to t raised to the power minus 1 over 2. So what time population h can yield the rate of change this? What time path? So time path is something we are trying to figure out. This is the time path. Time path is simply the situation where a function where a function has a dependent variable which depends over time. So you can see that population is depending on time. So it is time path of population. Diagrammatically, if this is time, this would be population. And this graph will be known as the time path of population. Now this is the answer of the derivative. What if we are interested in the population function or the primitive or the actual function that gave rise to this derivative? In order to find that out, we can uh, do a little uh, process of trial and error. And that function would be known as HT, HT that is the uh, population as a function of time or the time path of population. Now, if I assume that this is the function, its derivative will be equal to the given derivative and it will be verified that this is the correct assumption about the uh, primitive function. Uh, if we assume that this is the primitive function, you can see the derivative 2 comes uh, outside as a coefficient and 1 over 2 also um, is the power. So it, it is written separately here and then the power 1 over 2 minus 1 will become minus 1 over 2. So these two get they get, get cancelled out and we have this which is actually the derivative that we were given. So it means that if we assume that this is the population function or the primitive function it would be correct. Now this is not the only function that can give rise to this derivative. For example if I consider all these possibilities, if I consider that not only this, the assumed function, is the only function that I have, it's also plus 15 or minus 15 that gets added or subtracted, uh, or 19 that get, uh, 99 that gets added or subtracted. If we take its derivative, it will be equal to the same answer that we had by using the this uh, population function and same answer will be here because the constants they have a derivative equal to 0. So this so on continues and as we go ahead uh, this experimentation will give us the same result the same answer will be there when we take the derivative of this function because the function is um, uh, having the variable part which is the same only the constant is changing and a change in a constant is not going to change the result now we can write this generally as a uh, symbol c plus minus c and then we can merge this minus into the symbol c and it can be written as c asterisk that includes both positive and negative um, possibilities of constant so now we have this um, uh, derivative with respect to time and it is the same no matter which of the constants we use. Here the same things is uh, things are written instead of uh, mentioning minus c a negative sign is merged into c just like we did here the ni negative sign. c is used as general notation for all possible constant values and it's better to call c as an arbitrary constant. Now we call it arbitrary because uh, it's not just a matter of being unknown for this. This constant is not only unknown, it is also undetermined.
it is undetermined because uh, 15, 99, plus with minus, and all these possibilities that were there, we uh, we are not sure if it is uh, the first value or the second value, or out of these infinite values, which one of the constant is actually there. So it's not just the better of not knowing the uh, uh, value. The value itself is undetermined. This is why when something is assigned without a reason, it is known as arbitrary. And this is where you can see any of these constants can be used. So it is not assigned with a reason. It is just happening uh, for any of these constants that the answer is the same. So this is why we call it an arbitrary constant. That is why random choice it is. And then finally we can say that if this is the time path, because this would be underestimation, this C has to be given a place because there can be a constant with this function, the derivative of which would be zero. So leaving a space for a constant, we put this C. So the time path of population is developed. However, with this undetermined value of C, it remains general in nature and not definite because the C is still unknown. So it is a general solution. It is not specific or definite. So we can try to make it definite so that we could plot it and make better uh, interpretations from it. So what we do is that we try to determine the value of C, which is possible. And for that, what we do is we use an initial condition. As the name goes, it is something in the beginning or now. That is when the time has not passed. That is time is now. So t is equal to zero is the initial condition and that will give rise to the determination of the value constant c. Initial condition is the value of the dependent variable when the independent variable is zero. You know that independent variable is t, so the value of uh, h will be that initial condition. h not because instead of t you will write a not or a zero. So h is dependent upon time as we have just seen. Now we can do this simply by putting t is equal to zero and this will become an initial condition which can be either written like this or like that. The initial condition general path, general time path will become definite time path. H t is equal to this and this will be the simplification. Wherever we have t, we are going to put 0 as you can see. When we do so, c will be equal to h naught and that will be the a constant of uh, constants value um, that is the arbitrary constant now is evaluated has a certain value that is h naught and now we can uh, put this value of c here in the general time path that we developed or the general solution we had and now you can see h naught is there instead of c now we can interpret it and try to make sense of it and let's see that what is the interpretation. This is the time path and it is now definite in nature because there is no constant or arbitrary element in it. It is an initial population level because it is the initial condition and it is of age that is population. So we say that it is initial population. That's why we have a definite time path and not a general time path. Other part is the term that involves time that is 2t raised to the power 1 over 2. So this is that term which is actually involving time and can give rise to a varying graph. Arbitrary constant determined is uh, not arbitrary anymore as you can see which I have just substituted its value. Multiple arbitrary constants can exist for which initial condition should be available. Since uh, the possibilities of these arbitrary constants can be there and there can be more than one because if we have uh, two or more functions to integrate we will get more than one constants of integration and they will be arbitrary in nature and definitely we will need initial conditions for them and those initial conditions can help us to figure out those arbitrary constants and to help us to definitize them. 
so um, we will see that possibility in lectures ahead however complete map of the function solution of the dynamic model we uh, can say that the dynamic model is now solved and it is a complete map because it includes the uh, initial condition uh, and is not arbitrary in nature now it is definitized let us assume that the numerical value of initial condition is 100 that is the population starts from 100 and its level is 100 at this point in time that is now now the population is 100 and then over time there will be changes in the level of population which is modeled by this term now we can make a graph of this and try to understand the time path of population in a better way so this graph looks like this where the time variable is on x-axis population is on y-axis and um, the initial condition that is the initial level of population is 100 as we uh, understood and evaluated before could be millions or it can be thousands it depends upon the certain data that we have and then the graph is varying that is is not constant is moving above it means that we are dealing with a time uh, varying component of the graph and definitely it's um, a positive slope that we have afterwards so now we can say that we have developed the time path of population because the independent variable is time and population is dependent on that and over time we are observing that how the population is changing in the uh, uh, other two uh, or three quadrants we don't have anything because it doesn't have any negative value so the ne uh, time path is uh, limited to this quadrant that is the first quadrant and this is how we can analyze the uh, situation of a um, population function which is uh, having time as the independent variable which makes it a dynamic um, analysis situation and we have tried to build that time path using the given uh, information we also understood about initial condition and its role in definitizing the arbitrary constant and making the general solution a definite solution we also understood why there is this arbitrary constant in our uh, process of developing uh, the derivative and integration something that we haven't done yet but it will be used in the process of integration so this is how all of it can be done and uh, in the upcoming videos we will learn about integration which is directly connected to this in our certain module thank you